All right, welcome back to quarter one, week two, Booty Beach. Today is the third part of day one. We are going to be working on our uh, setup here, our scene setup. So the next thing we're doing today, we've we've been working on our chest, so our pirate chest. We've we've already created the chest itself, which is good. Uh, we set up our preferences and we create the actual chest. So you should now be ready to make the mounds of booty. All right, so this will be day one, part C. So uh, ultimately what we're going to do today is build a plane, talk about sub-object selection and soft selection, and then we're going to add some more ge uh, geometric primitives, maybe adjust their materials a little bit. All right, so let's jump back into where we were. This is the quarter one, week two, day one B end file. You can find that in the Google Drive that's linked in the comments or just above the comments section of the video. All right, so we have our chest right here. And yesterday, remember, or like earlier in the last video, we linked it all up so that the box is the root and the top part here can actually open and close and look pretty cool. All right, great. So today what we're gonna do is create a mound of booty, all right? So, I've got that. So we're going to create the gold pile, which is basically creating a plane and then soft selecting and warping the plane. Then we're going to add some gems, uh, and then we're going to actually add the material to it. Now, I've got this uh, sort of checker material here that is, is standing in for gold. Um, it's not perfect, but it'll be a good way for us to just sort of play around with some of the material editor properties. All right, great. So let's get started. So we've got the chest and all of these pieces ready to go. Um, let's go ahead and come up here. I've got circular selection, but I want marquee selection, a rectangular selection. I want to highlight all of my pieces here, and I'm going to right click and hide this selection. That way it's, it's basically gone. All right, in the top view, I'm going to press T. I'll look down here, and I'm going to create, um, I'm going to create a plane. So click plane, I'm going to hit S for snap, and then I don't see where it's snapping to, so I'm going to right click on snaps toggle and see it's snapping to vertex because it was like that when we left last time because we were snapping the lid to the actual trunk. Today we're going to try and do grid points. So we're going to do grid points for now. I click close that, and you'll notice I've got a little yellow cross that is connecting to all the grid points. So on my plane, I'm just going to click and drag out like that. And I'm going to click so that it's going to be 20. Uh, yeah, let's see. Let's go 10 by 20. That seems perfect. Great. So if we unhide, so if you can right click unhide all, you'll see that, um, oh, I must have created this in the front view. Oh, well. Um, my, no, I'm in the top. Okay, cool. I'm in the top. Uh, this should be the exact same size as my uh, chest here. So let's go ahead and undo. So control Z and that'll hide that back away. Now, what I've done is I've created a plane and this plane has three by three edges on it. Well, I guess technically four. One, two, three, and then I don't know. Uh, one, two, three, four. What we need to do is we need to bump this up because we want this to be smooth, all right? So I'm going to bump this up to like, let's say 20 by 20. Now that's a lot of geometry. And realistically, we probably want it to be more square. See how these are all rectangles? Because it's giving us 20 by 20. Well, we should probably have more width segments. So we're going to go to 40, and that cuts them all in half, so they're all basically cubes. Okay, cool. Great. So now we're going to convert this to an editable poly. Remember how we do that is right click on it and you get the uh, view. So come on down to convert to, I know you can't see it on my screen, but come down to convert to editable poly. All right. So now we've converted to editable poly. You'll see that we have all of our sub object selections over here. Today we're going to talk about something called soft selection. All right. So we're going to go to vertex. All right, and you'll, you'll see that all of our vertexes are here. Now, if you marquee select, you can turn them red. But marquee selection isn't a great idea for today because what we're going to do, what we're going to want to do is, is grab like 
more like a painterly section. So I'm going to come up here to my selection tools. I've got rectangular selection held. If I click and hold this, I can come all the way down to the spray, uh, spray paint can. Let go of that. Now when you click and drag, you have a little circle. And what it does is it selects anything you drag over. Okay? So that's pretty cool. That's, that's going to be really useful here in a second. Now what we're actually going to be doing here from the top view, I hit T for top, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. What I want to do is I want to grab just a section in the middle here, and it can be sort of random. Make sure you don't get any edges. As a matter of fact, don't, don't worry about getting too close to the edge either. All right, there you go, just like that. Okay, so I've got this sort of section that's red in the middle that I've just selected. Now, there's some in the middle that I didn't get, but that, and that's more than fine. If you want to deselect some, you can actually hold Alt and then click and deselect some as well. So if I want to come in here and do that. It's kind of hard to see, kind of, um, but that's where we're at. All right, maybe it's kind of easier to see like that. You can see the sort of shape that I've made. Anyway. Now, what I want to do is I want to create a gold pile. So I'm going to hit W, and I'm going to drag this up. Now, that doesn't look very good, right? So I'm going to hit Z, Control Z, actually, um, and put it back down. If I just drag it up, and I'm going to turn snapping off for now. Uh, if I just drag it up, it's not going to look very real. All right, what we want is we want it to sort of pull these up, but also pull the ones around it up, okay? So... That's called soft selection. And you'll notice I've got two panels over here. And my soft selection is in my second panel near the bottom. It's called soft selection. And mine is not expanded. So I'm going to click on it and expand it. Now this is the soft selection curve. But nothing's active right here until you actually turn on soft selection. And when you do, it will change the way this looks. If I click this, you'll notice everything is orange now. That's because I've got a fall off of 20 centimeters. So it's automatically falling off. So anything within 20 centimeters of a red dot is going to be affected. Okay? Oops. So therefore, when I do this, the whole thing moves. See how it starts to bend? All right. Now let's crank the fall off down a little bit. I just right click to undo that. Notice as I crank it down, the colors start changing. I want it so that the blue is inside and that we don't we're not affecting any of the outside verts. Once that's done, I'm going to pull up just a little bit. All right? See how that's a lot more like rounded and natural? This is going to be important when we end up doing uh, our island, okay? So, this sort of smooth transition only happens through here, okay? Now, what's cool is I can actually still adjust this. So, I'm going to hold alt. I'm going to go to my selection Hold Alt and then deselect some more of this. Not all of it, but some more. Just sort of randomly going through here. So you can see I dropped a lot of them. Now I'm going to pull up again just a little bit. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to deselect using Alt some more, especially around the edge. I really want to sort of pull this in a little bit. All right. And then I'm going to pull it up some more like that. All right. Now maybe select some. I'm actually just clicking and holding and selecting some more. If I hold Control, I can add more vertex vertices to that selection. So now I'm going to pull those up some. Okay. And now maybe grab some more of these. Pull those up some. And finally, some of these that are really low. I don't like the way they're low. I'm going to pull those up too. All right. Now. All of this is probably a little too bumpy for my gold pile because I would think gold would be a little little smoother transition. So what I can actually do is I can hit L for left. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to marquee select by hitting Q a bunch of times. Every time I hit Q it just cycles to a different type. I'm going to get the box back and I'm going to highlight all of those. Okay, I'm going to turn soft selection off. And now I'm going to go to Geometry, Relax. I'm going to hit it once and maybe again. There. Maybe one more time. There. So to me, that looks like a pretty good pile of gold.
Now you may be asking yourself why I wanted to make sure I did not get the edges here. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to hide these edges inside of the sides of the box. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit front. You can see everything there. I'm actually going to go to back to create mode so I can move this entire object if I want. So I move it, right click to change my mind. Um, so I'm going to unhide my box. So I'm going to unhide all. There's my box. All right, I'm going to hit F3. All right, and I'm going to drag this over. Now, ideally, I'm going to snap it to the center line. Okay, but my snapping isn't on. So I need to right click to undo. Or if you already let go, you can always do Control Z to undo. Then hit S for snap. That's my hotkey for snapping. And I'm going to snap it to 0, 0, 0, or the 0. Now I'm going to turn snapping off. I'm going to drag it up. Now I'm going to hit F3 to get back to my shaded view. I'm going to look in here. All right, I'm going to move this up a bit. And that's good. Now you'll notice my edge is sticking out a little bit. And that's not what I want. So I'm going to hit R and shrink the whole thing. Now once again, we talked about shrinking, uh, resizing objects. If you resize from this inner triangle here, the whole thing shrinks in all directions. If I resize it on this bar only, it shrinks like this, but it keeps its Z height. All right? If I shrink it just along Z, it flattens it out just along Y and it makes it skinny along the on the x-axis and same thing opposite there so what I want to do is I'm going to grab it along X and Y I'm going to pull it in just enough to where it's not sticking out just like that now if I hit W I can move this up along the z-axis only now once again if you're grabbing the z-axis and you're pulling up but it's moving left and right instead of just up and down you want to make sure you right click on snaps, go to options, and make sure enable axis constraints is set. All right. So now I've got my gold. All right. Now if I hit F9 and render it, you can see I've got my little gold, but it doesn't look great. All right. It looks gold because it's yellow, but it doesn't look shiny. Okay. So we want to we want to do some shininess. So let's get our shiny going. Go into your material editor, and then we're going to pick our third swatch, and I'm going to call it gold, G-O-L-D, cool. It's important to make sure we keep remembering to name these things. So this is our gold. Uh, you could call it coins or whatever, as long as it makes sense. Now go ahead to diffuse, click on that, and find a nice yellowish, orangish gold color that you like. That you, uh, like, I always think it needs to be more of a yeah I like that yellow I'm gonna drag that down drop it on there looks gold to me uh, now we're gonna actually make it shiny all right so we're gonna turn up the gloss and turn up the specular level so we get like a spike to it now when we render it by hitting F9 you can see it's got more actually it looks like cheese now it might be better anyway all right but what we want is we want to have some sort of like some sort of like shape to it some some sort of fake gold texture on it and we can do that through the maps channel maps have all sorts of stuff that you can adjust okay and what we're going to do is we're going to add a bump map okay so we're going to add a bump map so we're going to click there and then we're going to click over here where it says none all right and it's going to say all right what do you want to add and under the maps you can you can actually try out a whole bunch of stuff um, each one will give you slightly different uh, shapes and stuff. Let's just try a dent and see how that looks. Dent map. All right. Zoom in. Render it. Oops. Wrong button. Render it. Render. Render. You can't really see anything, can you? It doesn't look that good. That's what it would look like if we increase the density of it or actually decrease the density. So that's not going to be great. I'm pretty sure what I did is I used the, uh, let's see, brick. Let's go ahead and clear that out. Delete. Clear. You can right click on a, any one of these map channels and clear it. Okay. Um, we are going to use 
Where we go? Let's go ahead and use. Mm -hmm. Maybe smoke. No, cellular, I think, was circular. Let's see that. Alright. There, that's sort of bubbly in a way. It's not exactly what we're looking for, but it's a better look than we have. So I'd render. You're not getting a whole lot of variation. Let's go ahead and bump up the tiling. That means we're going to get a lot more of these in a smaller amount of space. So let's bump it to like, I don't know, uh, 50 by 50 by 50, and then see how it looks. F9 to render. F9. There. That kind of looks like gold or bubbly cheese. I'm okay with that. All right, so next we have our gems to put in. All right, so we've got this. We're, we're going to need some gem, so we're going to call this ruby. All right, ruby's going to be red, so click in the diffuse, make a make a reddish or pink, whatever, whatever you like. Um, so we're going to do that, and then after that, let's do an emerald. E M E R A L D, and I don't know what's uh, sapphire. It's a p h i r e. So red, green, and blue. Green, darker green. That looks good. And a blue. And a blue. Probably lighter blue. Okay, like that. Great. Now, what we also want to do is change the opacity here. I want to change the opacity to something along the lines of 60. All right, that means we'll be able to see through it. An opacity of 100 means you cannot see through something. Opacity of 0 means you cannot see it at all. So you're either it's either totally blocking sight or not. Now, for all of these, it would have been smarter, actually. And let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and take this, change our specular level, and our glossiness. We're going to make it super, like, glossiness of, like, 80 and a specular level of, like, 100. So it's super shiny. And there we go. I'm also going to turn on two-sided. There. That looks good. So now it's sort of shiny and, and nice. Uh, now what I'm going to do is actually drag this onto there, and then drag that onto there. So I've got three of the same things. Ruby, this is called Ruby, we'll call it, we'll change it back to um, Emerald. And then this will be Sapphire. I think that's right. Okay, so all we have to do now is actually change the color. The diffuse color here is going to be green. Okay, eh, maybe a lighter green. Cool. And then blue. Blue. And maybe a little bit lighter. Okay, great. So now what we've done is we've created materials, each named well. And now what we need to do is actually create our gems. All right, I went ahead and minimized that, but you can close it. It'll be there when we need it. Go to uh, Extended Primitives. And then here's where you can really sort of uh, have some fun and, and mess around with some of this stuff. Okay. Uh, we're going to make some, you can make a bunch of different things under extended or even standard primitives. Um, you can create all sorts of stuff like a geosphere. Oh. I'm going to create over there. So there's a geosphere. Um, and then I'm going to create, let's do extended primitives. Let's do a hedra, right? And maybe, and you can adjust the properties of a hedra. Um, so so you could do a cube or a dodeca, uh, dodeca sphere, or an icosophere sphere, or a star. All sorts of stuff. You can create a new one and then change it. Create another one, and change it, and another one, and change it. All right. So you got a bunch of fun stars, crazy things. Great. One, two, three, four, five. Let's do six. Uh, good. No. You can actually also invert these parameters so that they look. Each one looks different. All right. Great. Cool. Cool. So now what we gotta do is add our materials to them. 
So open your material. I'm just going to drag two reds, two greens, and two blues. Now all you have to do is resize them. And you can actually do that together. So hit Q, rectangular selection. I'm going to grab them all. I'm going to hit R. I'm going to rescale them all. Hit W to move them from the F for front. Move them up and move them over. Left L is for left. Move this over. And now all I got to do is sort of put them in the cheese. I'll put that one over. From the top view, you can sort of lay them all out. Like there. Oops. Make sure you grab the right thing. Dang it. Okay. If this is giving you a problem, you can actually click on the layer here and freeze it. It'll turn gray and that's okay for now, but then you won't be able, then you won't have to worry about clicking it. So I'm going to grab this, move it down. This, move it down. And you can rotate them as well. There we go. So they're just sticking out. Alright, this and that, and move them in. There we go. There you go. Now you can un unfreeze all. And now what we need to do is sort of layer, link everything so it's all together. This is the last thing we're doing, and then we're done. So now all you got to do is go to your select and link. We're going to link this gem to the gold, link this gem to the gold, link this gem to the gold, this gem to the gold this gem to the gold, this gem to the gold, and the gold is going to link to the box. So now, once again, we move the box, and the treasure goes with it, together. Alright? Cool. Now we can render it, just sort of keep track of where we are. Let's render it. Render. Alright. We can look get a better view of it real close. There you go. So we've got sparkly gems sitting in our bubbly cheese. If you want to go ahead and expand on this, you can you can mess around with the gold settings. Um, you want to go to parent to see this. You can adjust the bump level. You could bump it to like 60, so it's even more drastic. You could, and then you could try different things besides cellular. You know, you could right click and clear it, and change it to like checker. Okay. So the checker will give you a very odd look to it, but it's definitely um, an option. And you can change the bump n amount, so you can set it to like 60. When you render it now, it will have a big line in the middle. But if you double click the checker section, increase the tiling to like, I don't know, 20 by 20, you can see it's much more square like what I had before to go up to the parent, you go there, and then render it. There you go. And from a distance, this might actually look better. We could make our own with circles and stuff, but for now, I think this is a good start. All right, so back up a little bit. You can render it out, get a nice, uh, if you hold Shift F, you can see what actually will render. So you can sort of place it in your renderable viewport. And if you want to resize it, you can go to the zoom button down here, zoom out just a little bit, and then render it F9. And there you go. All right, so we've created it, and that's good. So I'm going to save this and call this Save As. So this is Q1, Week 2, Day 1, C, End, C, End. And it will be available for you to download so you can sort of see what we're doing. Save. And then next time we'll start on day two, which is creating the island. All right. That's it for today. Make sure you save your work. Uh, we'll talk more about how to render this out a little bit better next time. Uh, we'll also talk about like putting more like lighting and stuff like that in there. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. See you the next time.